of art is, I forget which artist defined it this way, but in science, science has become what the scientist says science exactly. is. Exactly. That would be a splendid definition of scientism. It's what the scientist says science is. Uh, yes, and uh, I mean, some of what the scientist says science is, is true. Yes. But, and, and that would not be labeled scientistic. But uh, let me give you an example of a scientistic idea which almost everybody in our civilization believes as scientifically established. The idea of Darwinian evolution, the idea that the species of plants or animals through mutations and adaptations uh, somehow morphs into a different species. Mm -hmm. Now Darwin proposed this in 1859 when we knew almost no biology. I mean, all we had done is we observed animals and plants and we knew what they look like and what they look like when you cut them up. But we didn't know any molecular biology. We knew nothing about genes. We really didn't understand much about biology. Mm -hmm. Then as we began to learn more and more and more, it became obvious to the, the smart ones that this is impossible. But by that time, the scientific idea had uh, somehow become so ingrained and it was supported by a kind of elite uh, which on ultimately ideological grounds wanted this doctrine to be accepted as a scientific fact so that it, instead of abandoning around 1950 when we discovered genes, it, the Darwinian theory should have been scrapped as a good idea that turns out not to be tenable. But it was doggedly retained. And in fact, the mechanism used to retain it uh, is a very interesting me mechanism. You introduce what should be termed ad hoc hypotheses in order then to bolster the hypothesis you want to protect from extinction. Mm -hmm. Ad hoc means as much as picked out of thin air. Mm -hmm. uh, What's an example of that in the Darwinian? Well, an, an example would be Théat de Chardin, the famous Jesuit paleontologist who had such an impact upon certain segments of the population. Mm -hmm. Well. There's a problem with Darwinian evolution that, according to Darwin's own book, uh, there should be intermediary forms in the fossil record. If species A evolves into species B, which looks quite different, mm -hmm. th there should be intermediary forms and they should be found, at least partially, in the uh, paleontological record. Right. Well, the fact of the matter is that not one of them has been found. It is now generally accepted that there are no intermediary forms. Mm -hmm. And now by right, this should finish the Darwinian theory. Darwin himself in his book says, if it will be found that there are no intermediary forms, this would disprove my theory. But historically what has happened is that, no, no, we won't let a nice theory die so quickly. And so, in a conference before a French Academy of Science, Théat de Chardin, about 1949, I think, proposed <laughs> the most incredibly ridiculous idea, what he called automatic suppression of origins. So, he postulated that there's some sort of a mysterious mechanism which um, wipes out intermediary forms, causes them to disappear. Well, this is about as ad hoc as anything can be. Pulled and out of thin air. Just out of thin air, it, it has a whole, it has a signature of desperation written on it. Yes. <laughs>